I just finished photographing my friend Cody Callahan in downtown Los Angeles right down below that's what I'm pointing to I had it styled by my friend Melinda who's the owner of Quark LA really cool vintage finds in the Los Angeles area she styles for a bunch of magazines a bunch of different people and then I'll be walking around in my Canon R6 I borrowed from a client a 2470R the mirrorless lenses and then I'm also using this really cool ND filter that my friend Zach told me to get it's adjustable so you get to see me moving it it's it's kind of amazing it reminds me of my dad's glasses that he got so he can wear them inside and they're clear and then when he goes outside they become sunglasses I bet you anything your dad has one too so this video is going to be divided into three different sections number one we're going to be talking about the equipment that I use which I just mentioned a little bit of it and that includes Includes the lighting number two we're gonna talk about how we're going to pick models with a purpose like you can just pick a person that is good-looking and that's subjective but there's a way that you're gonna pick somebody that's gonna benefit you and them and everybody involved and then number three we're gonna be watching me photographing him on the streets of downtown Los Angeles in the most perfect lighting of the year and I'll explain why and why it's why it's just you got to go out there now and start shooting and how i'm working with cody how it is to work with male models how to pose them why i'm posing them a certain way and then you're going to see the final images so let's get started first with how did i find cody so listen normally you would be going through the agency page he is with dt model management as you can see on the screen right now all the male models but i have a relationship with cody i have photographed him before as you can see some of the images like here these were for a t-shirt Company. but I photographed him a few years ago and then we just stayed in touch and I wanted to photograph him again Cody needed new images he just finished a TV show and just looking for the new season because it was a big strike here so everyone is trying to get new images right now but normally you would go through the modeling agency normally you would contact them you would make a mood board of like maybe two to three pages this video right here let's put it right there is gonna show you step by step I think it's the best mood board making video out there so that's gonna be linked to but the thumbnail is right there and it's a game changer in how you make mood board so you would send this mood board to the agency and you say hi my name is your name and the kind of photography you do and you're gonna put your website and your social handles and then anybody else working on this job so if it's a stylist hair makeup anybody else you want to list them because they want to see truthfully they want to see are you good enough for their model or what's your style are you gonna be a match or not and then you're gonna say can you please send me a package if they choose to accept you they're gonna sell you are they gonna send you like a little package is what it's called the package is a it's like a it's like a database or it's gonna be like a PDF or it could be like a website of the models that fit the criteria who are also available at the time that you want to shoot and who also there's like all these parameters that you have to meet I wanted to avoid that and I knew Cody personally so I just texted him and we exchanged you know the ideas back and forth and he popped over but here's why I pick Cody for this job. Number one, I I like I, I pick based off of energy, first of all, too. So it's the looks. And I'm like, do you feel like you have good energy or not? And usually I, I think I do a good job sensing that in the photograph. But in this case, I already know Cody. So he does. He has great energy. And we were just going to go down there. And he's super chill, super easy and professional and knows how to do this. Now, Cody generally gets booked for things like Diesel, um, Adidas, a few other brands. So he gets the really cool athletic or underwear shots. But I wanted to dress him up a little bit more as somebody that is just cool, effortless LA. They're dressing up, they can go to a business meeting, they could be going to a movie premiere, they could be going on a date, or they could literally just go meet their friend for lunch or walk around. LA has like a cool, relaxed vibe, but I just wanted to take that and give it a little bit of like that boost. So that's why I went to Melinda and I was like, Melinda, you have like a whole assortment of different vintage uh, clothing. Let's put something together for Cody. So I wanted to do that. And I also wanted a model that wasn't very visibly like, oh, I'm 19 and fresh on the scene. I wanted more someone with like masculine features and all that. So Cody can go younger. He can skew a little bit older if he wanted to. And it's how we dress him in the lighting and all that the other reason why i really like cody too is that he's very physically fit and when you are fit you generally pay attention to your body you know how to move your body too the thing is generally uh, male models don't move that much generally male models are the props and because the, the women are the kings and the queens of photo shoots so i wanted something that was going to work for him very natural very casual be in downtown los angeles be urban be gritty and that's why we pick cody callahan He's very good at what he does. Uh, remember when I told you that January light in Feb, 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 you, 
February. Remember when I told you January light and February? I can't say that month, you guys. The second month of the year has the most pristine light. This is what the quality of this light is. And then here's how lighting is usually done. So number one, um, January light is very, very low in the sky. I would say almost like at a 45 degree angle for most of the day. It's a shorter day though. So when that light is down, for example, I have a softbox right here and this light is about a 45 degree also. So what that does is that creates a little bit of a shadow here because this is a softer light, but outside in the sun, it's obviously harsher. It looks really good because it hits my face perfectly here. And it's good for, I would say, any population from 70, 80 years old to seven and eight years old too, and everything in between. January light is also very, very clean. You don't have a lot of that metropolitan city smog for whatever reason in the air. The light, I think, is also more white, more of that perfect daylight balance type of light. And the shadows, and because the, the sun is more at this like 45 degree angle, the shadows fall. And so obviously you get a shadow here. From my jaw, you get a longer shadow. But on top of that, the shadow of my body falls all the way out too. Whereas in the summer, the sun is directly overhead. Find me one person in the history of all history of humanity that looks good underneath recess lighting. And I think recess lighting, like in the ceiling, they put these lights, is based after the summer sun. It's horrible. It's a war crime. It's the worst thing I've seen, I, and they still make homes with recess lighting. Nobody looks good in recess lighting, but that's like the summer sun. It's directly overhead. So even if you have one tiny hair of an eyebrow, I have a lot more, you get these raccoon eyes right here and nobody looks good. Then you have to use bounce to, uh, that sun has to go here and bounce and go back in the eye and the model's like going blind. It's not a good look or you have to bring in a lot of artificial light. The other thing that I wanna say is almost every single light sold in the world, every single photography and movie light is based after the sun in its various stages of various times of the day and various times of the year. That's all that it is. So you have the biggest key light in the world up in the sky and you want to take advantage of that. And when there is a beautiful winter sun, you're just going to win all the time. Why bring strobe when the sun is already out there? I also want to tell you in this video, three tips that I think are going to help you out a lot in photographing male models. So number one, remember I told you that male models are more of the accessories in a lot of shoots. So they're told to be very stiff and just muscular and everything. Whereas the women generally are allowed to be more flamboyant and colorful and expressive. So to help you get the best images out of male models, you got to understand why they are hired and largely what they are for. So in, in a lot of shoots, if it's, if there's a woman in the shot, he's number two, it just is okay. 99% of the time he is number two, but knowing that you don't want him acting crazy. You want to make sure that they are in a walking stance. So the leg is always going like this. You want to make sure that it's a lot of like over the shoulder and looking. So that's what we did with Cody. It was a lot of standing, a lot of walking, a lot of just like uh, looking at the camera, like who me, that type of a shot. It may not seem as fun, but if you want them to book more, which is your job as a photographer to serve them, then you want to make sure that you're like, okay, if I was an advertiser and I'm looking at Cody, how would I want to see him? In most cases, that's what they're looking for. This is separate from acting and his acting career. The other thing that I want you to do is to Number one, show their different angles, but also find the different angles and keep photographing the best ones. So there is a little clip that you see of me telling Cody, like, you look good this way, you look good this way, but there's one side that he just looks like so much, so much better. It's like a, you know, I don't want to rate anybody, but if he's a 10, this is a nine, nine and a half, this is a 10. And everybody, most everybody has a better side. So your job is to find these things. So when the model is just sitting there, you have to move all around and try different shots. These are the things that are going to bring you a lot of success with a male model, in particular a male model, because um, generally they don't move around that much. They're not that expressive. So how you can give them variety is that instead of having them do the crazy movements, you do the crazy movements and you hop all around. And when you find that one angle, you're like, ah, oh, yes. Because a lot of times in a photo shoot, you just need that one or two shots of a certain look and you're like, done, perfect. Bullseye, let's move on to the next one. A third thing that I'd really encourage you to uh, look for in photographing, not just a male model, but also female and just everybody is 
You want to set up the scene. It's not a complete shoot until you get a full body. If you want to do lookbooks, which are very profitable, you want to do fashion photography. Uh, in the beginning of my career, I shot a lot like this much and up or extreme close-ups. But they were like, but tell us the story, Waleed. Like, where is he? You're going to see me photographing Cody full body. Number one, they want to show their clothes. They want to know how he works the shoes, the pants, the shirt, the jacket, if there's a jewelry, if there's a hat. You want to know how they can move these different components because Levi's are like, should I hire him? Can he move a denim jacket? Can he move jeans? So you want to show variety and the best way is to show a wide. Also, you want to tell a story. He is in downtown Los Angeles, um, looking around, looking cool, waiting for his friend. You want to tell a story. The second one you could pretty much guess is you want to do a medium, kind of how I'm framed at this moment. The medium allows you to focus more on one garment and a little bit more of their personality and expression and just shows everything all at once. If we don't sell a denim jacket, this would work, obviously with my face and my head still in there. So, and then the third one is, and I'll do a quick recap. The third one is a super, super macro. Um, for that one, it could be tight. It could be here to here and we show the stitching of the jacket or if there's a ring. So you could do the, the ring right here like that. And it's a really, really tight shot. When you give the client, when you give the audience, whoever is watching a wide shot to establish where we're at. Oh, cool. We're like in LA. It's super urban. It's a nice day. Wow, let me go a little bit closer, get to know this model, be a little bit more intimate. What's he wearing? That's so cool. I love that. I love the logo on the button. I love the stitching, the material. And then you want to go in real close and that really allows you to connect one-on-one -on -one with that model. But it also allows you to show things that normally you wouldn't see in a wide shot. The wide shot is to establish the scene and to show their full body. Next, let's talk about how we're going to cast male models. And I do hope that you're enjoying the shoot with Cody. By the way, perfect time to ask you. Um, this channel is intended to help photographers make money. So I would love to see you again if you hit subscribe. You already knew I was going to ask that. And here's the thing. I have a favor to ask of you. Can you give it a little thumbs up and a comment uh, if you have a question or anything? I'd really appreciate that. Let's talk about casting and how you can have successful casting for your photo shoots. If you want to cast a model, and of course the rules apply to kids and adults and men and women, but in this case, I'm going to really gear it towards men. When you pick a male model, uh, you want to make sure that the clothing fits. One way to do that is when you look at, for example, Cody's agency page, they're going to have his latest stats um, there. So those are the stats that you're going to copy and you're going to send to the stylist and you're like, this is what they wear. So everything should be ready for them. Now, everything is going to be pinned a little bit. So you might cinch it a little in the back to uh, make it a little tighter, a little more fitted. That's absolutely normal. You want to go to one of the hardware stores and get a bunch of those little clips, put a, a, a few in your bag. Don't expect the stylist to bring it. Just have it yourself. And then you always want to do that and just give it a little bit more shape. Absolutely normal. Absolutely expected. Never have a model turn around because backstage, which is their back, is horrific. It's like... It's like a building under construction. There's like pins and clips and tape and everything. That's how everything looks so good. The second thing is you always want to experiment. Now look, a brand doesn't want crazy, crazy experimental. They don't because if you're photographing, so you're seeing Cody right now and you're just seeing a simple shot of him. If I was to have him do crazy things, it's going to cross out a lot of brands. If I had him wear super, super, super crazy clothes, even though these are vibrant and very LA and maybe it's geographic fashion, not global um, fashion, he wouldn't really fit into most brands. The people who hire you at the brands generally, the people that write the checks are not creatives. They are great people, but they're not creatives. So they hire creatives like yourself and I to bring that creativity into their jobs. So if I was to photograph him in something like all leather, uh, latex, everything, Levi jeans won't be looking at him like, oh, no, 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 because they can't look past that. They can't just look at Cody as a model. They're like, no, 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 we don't do leather. I, I, I'm out. So now we just scared away a chunk of the market. So when you do male model shoots, you want to make sure that it's a tiny bit generic, safe, but once you get that, it's okay now to push it for your book and push it for their book. So in this case, I brought him up to this rooftop and he had the jacket like a really like a, almost like a bomber letterman jacket with the patches and i was like cool we're done he's in great shape 
and he had like these trousers and i thought how dolce and gabbana would it be if you just wore the trousers took off the shirt and we used that beautiful january sun and we pushed it over now is the stylist gonna love that no she will not are we gonna be able to see the details of the pants no because we're not showing the full pants it's more about the imagery now, Cody can take some of that. His agency can take some of that. I'll take some of that from my book. But you never want to keep everything 100% safe because then you're not going to grow as an artist. So you want to get what you need. Get your safe shots. I got the shirt. I got the pants. I got the hat. I got him ha happy. I got him walking. I got him sitting. I got him from the front, from behind, from the side. Um, happy, sad, mad. All the different things on your checklist. Then you're like, cool. Hey, come here and think about something. Hey, take your shirt off and try this. Always ask him for permission. Always read the room and make sure that they're okay with like disrobing and they have the last say over their body. The third one is very, very similar in casting a model. You want to make sure that you cast somebody that you know you can push it 15%. So I call this like the portfolio 15. And anytime a client hires me, it's very similar to point number two. Anytime a client hires me, I'm like, hmm, you want ABC. But how can I give you A, B, C, C plus, and D? That didn't make sense. So I'll try that again for you guys. How do I push it 15% where it still fits and they're not upset? The reason why I keep it just a little bit is because you don't want to upset anybody. This is on their money, on their time, but you want to give them a little bit more. Like I said, in most cases, they don't know creativity the way you would know or the way I would know. So it's our job to show them. You know, when you go into a store, they might say, hey, let me show you one more thing. Let me show you one more thing. And that's how they do it. Okay. I hope that this helped you out a lot. This video here is that mood board video I talked about. Please watch this. You got to know how to make a mood board. The one right below it is inspirational. You need to watch it if you ever think you failed. Right here is where you subscribe. Can you please do me a favor and give it that thumbs up and a comment, please. Finally, my name is Walid Azami, and that right there is my work. Not over my face, like right there over my chest. I'll see you next time.